Okay, today guys, we are testing how a wind meter works. So a wind meter is actually called an anemometer and what we're going to end up with for our final product is something that looks like this. An anemometer is how scientists test the wind speed outside. Um, and the way it's tested is by the revolutions per minute, which means they calculate where the anemometer starts and they calculate how many revolutions or spins it takes per minute. Per minute. All right, so to do this, we need straws, we need a pen, we need a ruler, and we need pins, which students will be asking teachers for help with, and we need some sticky tape and some cups. You can use paper cups or polystyrene cups. I've gone with paper cups because they're a little bit firmer. So our first step is to collect four straws. You can choose any different colors that you like. Now, it's better to choose the straws that have the bendy part on them because they will help us when we come to combining them with our cups. So we'll first we want to combine two straws together and let's go cross colors. So make sure your bendy ends are on the outside of your straws when you're joining them. And to join them can sometimes be tricky, but what we do is we bend the straw a little bit so that it pushes into the other straw and it becomes combined. You just want to make sure that it's nice and tight and firm. Not like that. It's like I said, tricky. So there we go. So that's nice and firm. And I've already pre-prepared one here. So we want to make sure that they're also the same lengths. That's very important. So you can see here that it's not quite the same. So I'll adjust it so that they are. It's a little bit tricky sometimes. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much spot on. So perfect. So now we've got our two straws. After that, we want to collect five cups. So five plain cups like this. And I've pre prepared mine. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to measure on our cups four spots to make holes for our base cup first, for our center cup. And we're going to be making a hole at the bottom of the cup for the pencil to go through. So what we do is, and I've already made the holes, but what the students will do is I'll use a ruler and they'll just make a little mark on their bot, on their little cup on either side so it's perfectly even. And then using the pen, we'll press through the paper cup. Now, um, this can be tricky and students need to be warned to be careful with the pen. We don't want students stabbing themselves. I ideally, you could also use a pencil. It doesn't have to be a pen. So what we do is, and we don't want to make the hole very wide or thick. The hole has to be nice and firm and small, like you can see on these ones here. So what we do is, we'll put the pen on the bottom of the cup and we'll just sort of push in, just gently. And remind students I've got to do this gently so they don't end up poking themselves or hurting themselves. You heard that? Just popped. And then we'll just sort of push the paper and push the pen through. You might have to just get a firmer hold of it. Just like that. And see, that hole is perfect size. And you will achieve that hole in that sort of size either using a pen of about this thickness or a pencil. So now we've got a base cup. And our base cup is this one here, the one that the pencil will stick through and the one that the whole anemometer will spin through. So now we've got our base cup, it's got four holes for the straws. Our next step is to get our other cups and put one hole on each side of it, which will be where the straws come through here. And I've pre-prepared these as well. So we've got one, two, Three, and this hole seems to have closed up a little bit. We'll just fix it up a bit. Three and four. All right, now we've got our four. This is where the straws come in, and this is why I said to you we need to have the bendy parts on the end. This is where we need to use those bendy parts to attach to the inside of our outer cups for the spinning part of the anemometer. So we get our base cup, 
and we'll sit it upright like this. Now we've got to thread our straw straight through the middle here. Now you might find that your holes are either a little bit too small or a little bit too big. You might have to adjust them. Mine seems to be just right in this position. We just push it through until it looks about even and if you'd like you can use your ruler to measure. It's up to you. I'm just going to do it by eye line. And then we'll just push our other straw through the other holes. And again, just make sure the holes are not too firm but not too loose either. If your holes on the outside of your cups become too loose, your straw won't be firm and it'll fall off and then holding the cup on the end, it won't be strong enough here to hold the cup here on the end and it'll just flop. So you've got to make sure it's just that perfect firmness and as you can see mine have come through perfectly. So here we go and this looks about right. Now the next step is the bendy parts of the straw. So what we've got to do is we take the bendy part of the straw and we push it through the hole that we've made in the straw here and we use that bendy part to turn into the cup. Can you all see that that's how it goes? Now we need sticky tape. So we just pull up a bit of tape. I'm using the tape on the inside of the cup, if you can see that, and you've just got to tape it there. Now this can be a fiddly task. You've got to make sure also that your cup is pointing out. You don't want your cup sitting upright like, like so, you want it this way. So you're just going to make sure it's like that and then you tape it in that position. This can be fiddly and that's why students will be completing this task in partners. So they'll have a partner to help them hold on to it. And we just repeat that step for each part, each side and each cup. So we'll pull some more sticky tape off, pulling the bendy part in, use the bend to push it in. And just tape it. So now we can see two sides are done and you can see that as it is, the straw is just putting them down. That's all right for now. We'll fix that up later on when we get to the pin part, which is the part that the teacher has to help students with. So continue this process. All right, so good. Now we've got it pretty much sitting in a basic setup. That's what we wanted. Okay, so now we've got all our cups situated. We've got them all sticky taped in the middle. Now you've got to make sure that the cups are in the right directions because obviously if your cup is not in the right direction, wind will not be picked up inside of it and it won't spin. So you've got to make sure that essentially each head of the cup, the open part of the cup, is facing the bottom of the cup in front of it. And that's the way it needs to go in the circle. So once you've got that all sorted out, then you've got to make sure that the straws are even amounts, even lengths here. And again, you can use a ruler, but because I'm just doing a demonstration, I'm just going to sort of use my brain and my eyes. And so then we push the straws together in the centre there like that. And we get a pin and we're going to pin them together. Now, if students are worried about doing this on their own, the teacher might have to help them. And it's not too difficult, but you don't want to end up pinning your finger. Alright, so now you can see that that part is done. And this is where the hole in the bottom of our base comes in handy. So now we've got a pencil. And you've got to make sure that the pencils you use have got an eraser on the end. Because a pin is going to stick through the eraser. If you've got a pencil that doesn't have that, you're not going to be able to do the experiment. The whole thing is pointless. through the bottom there and just like that just push it through make the hole a bit bigger if it needs to and remember that this has to spin this whole thing has to spin on there so you don't want it too tight but again you don't want it too loose so you'll just push it through and looking at the top here where the pin is the pin is hanging out about just half a millimeter so we're going to push that part of the pin into the bottom of the eraser of the pencil and then we're just going to push it in really hard and squish down those straws as far as we can just to make sure the pin goes in as far as it possibly can. And basically that's it. And there's your animal. And there we go. Here's 
our first one that we made. So now we've got two sitting here. Now, um, it's important for students to understand all the aspects of this investigation and understand that having the open part of the cups need to all be in the same direction and why? And they need to understand the velocity of wind and they need to understand what a revolution is. So when we talk about a revolution per minute, we mean one spin per minute. Now in the classroom, the way this should work is possibly to have a fan for each group of kids, maybe 10 to 15 groups of kids and they can all just rotate their pairs and take turns and have a fan with three different speed settings on it. All right, so we'll be using a fan and the fan's going to have three different speeds. Now students will take turns um, in their pairs, standing as close or as far away from the fan to make sure that they can count the revolutions. Now in order to help you count, you need to be able to see which cup is your starter point. So you get a texter and you just put a big dot on the bottom of your cup and put some markings maybe on the front. So maybe you can even put a smiley face or your name, your partner's name, so we know whose activity this is. You know, like either side, just to make it really obvious to you because you're going to be counting the spins per minute to the fan and you don't want to lose track of how many spins have happened because you don't know which cup was your starting cup. So there you go, you can see I've just put a dot on the bottom there and I've just got some scribble. So you want to be able to see that. Now, in the classroom, if the teacher likes, she could even give students the opportunity at the start of the class to get textures or paint if they want to introduce arts and crafts and they can decorate these cups and make them really beautiful or they could just do it sloppy like I have. Either way works. So we've done that. So then what we're going to do is count a revolution per minute to the three different fan speeds. So we'll here we're improvising and we're using a blow dryer. And the blow dryer actually only has two speeds, not three. But just to give you an example of how this works is, make sure that our starter cup is visibly in line with the fan. So it's very important that you try and get the air of the fan pointing into the cup to give that wind velocity there. All right, so um, using the um, blow dryer, you'll see that I might have to adjust this distance to make sure that I can actually count how many spins it takes. So students will have to adjust how far they stand from the fan to document this. And one partner should be holding the anemometer and one student while he's counting and one student should be also counting but holding a book and ready to write down how many spins there were per minute. And the person who's writing down should also have a stopwatch set to 60 seconds so that they can calculate exactly the spins per minute. And for each fan speed, they should do it three times, three to five times, more if you have more time in the class, just to get a real um, accurate draw of how many spins or RPMs, revolutions per minute, for your um, data later. Because later on in the class, you could um, interpret your data and you could speak about what that data means to um, a, a wind calculator. See, I have to adjust, maybe if I go like this is too fast, I can't count that, so we'd have to go further back. And then we could try our next fan speed. Now, so basically that's the gist of what a wind meter does, and this comes under um, this experiment comes under the environmental strand in the science and technology syllabus for New South Wales and in the Australian curriculum as well now. And it's important for students to understand what this means, like why are they doing this? So if you're lucky enough and you've got a windy day, you can take the students outside and you can show them that and get them to calculate to the actual wind outside. So I hope you've enjoyed our little ex experiment today. I hope it can be useful for your classroom and have fun.